From the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all time, transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs. Tarzan, the bronzed white son of the jungle. And now in the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of Gold Coast Robbery. Nungo had been running for days. His great ebon body was bathed with sweat. His legs ached and his breath came in great tearing sobs. But he could not rest even for a moment. Terror drove him on, and only the hope that Tarzan was in his seacoast cabin gave him the courage to go on. And now at last he had reached the cabin's clearing. He was near exhaustion, but fear provided the strength with which to summon the Lord of the Jungle. Nungo! Come in, here. Uh, let me help you. Doctor, save Nungo from police. The police? Here, catch your breath, Nungo. And tell me what this is all about. Not much time. They're close behind. Here, sit down. Uh, drink this, will you? Santa. Now then. Police, come into the village of Nungo's people. Arrest six, eight warriors of tribe. Try, arrest Nungo. Nungo, run. Men chase. What crime are you and the others accused of? Not tell us. Just come into the village with thunder sticks. Take warriors from him. It's police. Tarzan save Nungo. Good evening. Who are you? What do you want? I am Abdul El Kifin, and this is Ben Hasib, my deputy. We represent the police, and we track the native here. Who are you? I am Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. Ah, the great protector of his black brothers. <laughs> Well, you will gain nothing by lying, Tarzan. We know the native is here. I did not plan to lie. He is here. Come in. There's the no good scoundrel keeping crouching in the corner. Ah, he does well to crouch in fear. Not you, Thunder Stick on Nungo. We have no intention of shooting you, not after having followed you for hundreds of miles. Get to your feet. Just one moment, El Kipin. What? A man is entitled to know what crime he is accused of before being arrested. Ah. Nungo and several others of his tribe are accused of robbing the Kasanya Railway. Robbing the Gold Coast train? Three nights ago, they piled heavy lumber and rocks on the track. The engineer was forced to stop. When he did, the blacks overpowered him. Over a million dollars worth of gold bullion was stolen. And what proof have you that the men of Nungo's tribe were involved? The proof will be established in the police court at Porto Chibir. There is no government court at Porto Chibir. Do not put words into my mouth. I did not mention a government court. Then what court convenes there? The Kasanya Railway, as you know well, traverses the distance from the Gold Coast to Port Said. Thus, it passes through the possessions of several different countries. But the right-of-way is under the control of the railroad itself. We operate the trains, we patrol the land, we maintain our own police, and we conduct our own courts. It is this court that Nongo and his fellows will face. It sounds like a very impartial court. Our power is great. Patterson, I warn you against any interference. You warn me? Every indication points to the fact that the natives who robbed the gold shipment have been directed by someone of superior intelligence. I would not require too much prodding to arrest you also. After a short message, we shall return to our story. The Cassania Railway, for all its precious cargo of gold, is a puny affair. Its narrow-gauge tracks wander almost aimlessly across jungle and desert. Its engines are antiquated, and the crew of its trains consist only of the engineer. Now the engineer, who had been bound and gagged a few days before, faced the friendly court at Porto Chibir. Do you 
recognize any of the men who overpowered you? I... I can't be sure. Well, take your time. Look the prisoners over carefully. May I remind the court that part of the gold has already been recovered from the hut of the native who calls himself Nungo, and that he attempted escape when we arrested the others? I am quite capable of conducting this trial, El Kafin. Now then, engineer, does Nungo resemble any of the men who held up the train? E yes, perhaps he does. Your Honor, may I address the court? Uh, cousin. State your business, man of the jungle. A few days ago, Al Kafin chased Nungo to my cabin. Then he brought him back here for trial, and Nungo has now been in your jail for many days. Yes? Anyone could have placed part of the stolen gold shipment in his hut during that period. Your whole case hinges on the engineer's identification of Nungo and the others, and he has already said that he could not be sure whether they were the same natives who held up the shipment or not. And what is your connection with the case? The head of your police, El Kafin, threatened to arrest me. Although he thought better of his threat, he indicated that the natives who held up the gold shipment had a leader and that I was suspected. Uh, more than just suspected, Tarzan. More than... Truck, How I will call on you when I wish your testimony, El Capin. Go ahead, Tarzan. I admit freely that these suspects whom you have lined up here like defenseless cattle awaiting slaughter are my friends. I am their leader in a sense, for I am lord of the jungle. But neither they nor I have ever had any hand in robbery. I think I can prove that. Uh, this is ridiculous, Your Honor. I have the evidence. I caught the thieves, and justice should be administered without further delay. There's no question of their guilt. There is some question, El Kefin. How do you propose to prove their innocence, Tarzan? Through the use of the leather truth pellets. Well, I've heard of this native test, but I do not understand it. The use of the truth pellets is known to only a few. I learned it from a native medicine man who was wise in the ways of men. Well, it might be worth a try. I object strenuously to the use of these truth pellets, part of some native superstition Tarzan learned from a witch doctor with a ring in his nose. It so happens, El Kafin, that the learned Witangala, from whom I learned the secret of the truth pellets, did not wear a ring through his nose. He belonged to a people who affect an eight-inch length of bone through the separate of their noses. It did not affect his sense of justice. Well said, Tarzan. Uh, proceed with the truth test. The courtroom was tense as the prisoners lined up before the bar of justice to take the truth test of the jungle. Long had they known this infallible test devised by some wise medicine man, yet none understood it. They fidgeted nervously while two court attendants restrained El Kafin as he raged at the presiding justice. Why should I take the test? I am not on trial. You are the accuser. Is it any less important that you tell the truth? I am the police, and I refuse to take this primitive test. Abdul El Kafin. Until now, I have always regarded you as a man with a future, but should you refuse to cooperate with this court... I can promise you that your future will not be bright. Well, uh, all right. I'll take the test, but I won't abide by any ridiculous findings Tarzan claims to determine from it. This is not to be considered judgment of the case, but I am most anxious to see how this test works. Proceed, Tarzan. Thank you. Now then, uh, all of you open your mouths. The pellets, Guanete, Macalia, Niato, Uzongo, Ruenja, Dungo... The engineer and uh, El Kafin. Thank you. The uh, pellets that are in your mouths now are, are small. They will not interfere with your answers. Well, that's simple so far. Go ahead with the questions. Nungo, you were away from home on the night when the train was robbed. Where were you? Nungo and other men accused hunt for wild beasts. Your hunting trip took you near the tracks of the Cassania Railway? The deal. We follow spoor of wild beast herd. Go near tracks. Ruenja, did you or the others drop some rocks or some heavy timber on the tracks? See you, Tarzan. Ruenja, not go near tracks, not drop anything. Engineer, are you sure you did not stop the train of your own accord? Why should I do that? For a share in a gold shipment, you might have been tempted. Honestly, I've told the truth all along. The tracks were piled high with rocks and heavy timbers. I had to stop. I had just put on the brakes when the natives swarmed all over me. And El Kafin and his Ascari arrived only a few minutes later? Uh, that's right. El Kafin, how did you happen to be near the village of Momades, almost 80 miles from Porto Chibir? My deputies and I were following up another case, one concerning a minor sabotage to our tracks. Sabotage? Yes. Some of the people around there must have stolen some rail spikes to use as uh, 
Well, I don't know what they intended to use them for, but... You were examining the track from which they were stolen, huh? Naturally. And yet you didn't happen to see the spot where the rocks and the lumber were piled high enough to stop a train? We... We were traveling in the other direction. I see. Uh, Would you all open your mouths now? Uh, Thank you. I shall collect the leather pellets. Ah. Well, what do the little pellets tell you, Tarzan? They reveal that those I did not question were prepared to tell nothing false and that the truth was spoken by all those I did question, save one. And uh, the one who lied, according to your test? Your chief of police, Abdul el Kafin. What's he trying to get away with? This is ridiculous. He comes into a court of law with his native rubbish and tries to accuse the head of the police of lying. I'll... You'll do nothing that is not sanctioned by the court. Oh, Attendants, return the natives to their cells until I've reached a decision. El Kafin, you are free to go about your duties, but be where I can reach you. I have business in that camel market. I shall be at the livery stable of the old man of the gray beard. I know where it is. Tarzan, I wish to speak to you in my office. I'm not at all convinced of the miracle of your truth test. Oh, come, come, Tarzan. I permitted you to try the test in my courtroom. Surely I'm entitled to know in what manner the pellets proved that El Kafin was lying. Well, you see, when one is nervous, uh, upset, worried, the saliva glands of the mouth fail to function. Yes? Those with a clear conscience reacted normally throughout my questioning. The mouth of him who lied was parched and dry. All of the other pellets were wet. El Kafin's was bone dry. Mm, a remarkable piece of psychology. Still, it can hardly be accepted as proof that... Tarzan, watch out! That knife barely missed my throat. Uh, someone threw it in at the window. But there's no use going after him now. He rode a fleet young camel. The knife has a note attached to it. It must have been embedded in that wall several inches. Oh... You read Swahili? A little. Mm, It's a warning to you, Tarzan. A warning that a cusa will slit my throat if I continue to meddle in this case. Your native friends, this is their language. Yes, it is in the dialect of their tribe, yet few of them write. Still, it outlaws the possibility that El Kafin may be involved. You know, the Swahili language in this note is almost perfect. It contains only one error. One error? It says that a knife will end my days. Only the Swahili word for knife is kizu. The word for knife used in the note is cusa. A word of the Arabic language. I have done as you told me, Tarzan. I have issued a bulletin stating that I have adjudged the natives guilty, that they will be sentenced shortly. Good. But uh, what will it accomplish? It will make bold the real thieves. El Kafin, perhaps, or those he attempts to shield. But by this time, they've already escaped with the gold shipment. There is an old custom in the case of a lost coin. You throw another into the air. Where it lands, you find the first coin. I have heard of the superstition. It sometimes leads to the loss of the second coin. And sometimes to its recovery. Have faith in me. Make another shipment in your usual fashion. Take no pains to broadcast its departure, but make no effort to hide the fact from those who are ordinarily aware of the shipments. All right, it's a good idea. Uh, this time, we'll have a troop of soldiers on the train. Oh, no, that, that would defeat my purpose. Those who learned of the shipment would also learn of the presence of soldiers. But I can't send another shipment unguarded. Tarzan will guard it. I will slip aboard as the train goes through the jungle. Not even the engineer will be aware of my presence. You intend to guard the shipment without help? Oh, you need have no fear. Although the engineer will be unaware of my presence, anyone who attempts to rob the train will be keenly aware that Tarzan guards the treasure of the Gold Coast and the reputation of his friends. In just a moment, we will return with the exciting conclusion of Gold Coast Robbery. As the gold train passed from the jungle to the sandy plains of the Libyan desert... Tarzan sprang from a narrow trestle to the roof of a boxcar. 
He had crouched there but a short time when a horde of savage natives jumped from the backs of fleet camels and swarmed onto the train, overpowered the engineer, and brought the train to a stop. Others smashed in the doors, protecting the gold. Still others battled savagely with Tarzan. Their numbers were too great, and he fell beneath their blows. He awoke later to the sound of Arab voices. Oh. Snap the handcuffs on the Nasrani. He won't make such a good impression when he returns to Port Jebir this time. So, El Kifin, huh? Do not try to escape, Tarzan. I would be well within my rights as a police officer were I to kill a thief running from the scene of his crime. My crime? It is too bad your native accomplices made their getaway with the gold. But I think great credit will be ours for having captured the leader of the treacherous natives. <laughs> Do we waste time, Your Honor? You have the power to sentence Tarzan without further preliminaries. We are not in the courtroom, El Kefen, and Tarzan is not on trial yet. Thank you, Your Honor. You need give me no thanks. I intend to mete out the punishment due you after we have recovered the gold you and your followers have stolen, and after I've gathered the testimony I need. Now, where's the engineer of the train? Uh, here I am, sir. And what is the complete story this time? It's just as I told El Kefen. I was keeping my eyes on the track ahead. Afraid they might have built a blockade like they did last time. Yes? Suddenly I heard camels coming at full gallop. They were the fastest camels I ever saw. Not like the old timers in the marketplace here. Well, they overtook the train before I knew what was happening. And the thieves bound you and knocked you over the head? Yeah, that's right. But you retained consciousness uh, long enough to determine that they were natives and not Arabs, as Tarzan has led us to believe. Oh, they were natives, all right. And Tarzan was with them? Well, I can't say he was with them, but I can swear he was there. I caught a fleeting glimpse of him just before I lost consciousness. So? Of course I was there, Your Honor. You knew I planned to be aboard. Yes, you duped me very successfully. Or perhaps I fooled myself with all the talk about Arabs being responsible. I overlooked the previous testimony of the engineer concerning your natives. Even your famous truth pellets did not accuse him of lying. Ah, uh -huh. it was lucky we arrived at the scene of the robbery before Tarzan regained consciousness and escaped. Shall we take him to a cell? My court attendants are quite capable. Tarzan in handcuffs does not frighten me. The rest of you are excused. I'll remain here until Tarzan is behind bars. I said you were excused, El Kefen. Uh, all right. All right, only I think you're taking a chance. Your Honor, do you really believe that I am the leader of the thieves? Would they have knocked me over the head and left me? They might have run off when the police came, and uh, you could have been struck by an overhanging tree. A tree higher than the boxcar in the desert? Well... Uh, and you choose to believe that El Kafin just happened along after the robbery once again? Uh... I believe little that El Kafin says, but the head of the police is not without influence. Oh, if I were free, maybe I could still unravel this mystery. Black men who ride camels like Arabs, fleet young camels such as are unknown here, all of it. I would appear to be in a bad light were I to release you. However, were you to strike me on the jaw and make your escape... <laughs> oh, no, I, I couldn't bring myself to hit you. Well, it needn't be too hard. Just hard enough to leave a convincing mark. And you better scramble things in my desk a bit. You would hardly be expected to know that my bunch of keys is in the center partition of the top drawer. Why you help Nungo escape, not let others out, Tarzan? I may need help, but if all of you were gone, the alarm would be sounded within minutes. You may not be missed right away, and it may be some time until anyone goes into the office of the justice. Where we go now? Oh, this is the marketplace we're approaching. Oh, quick, into this doorway. Gani? Oh, we're in luck, Nungo. This is the store of a dealer in used clothing. Nungo not know what Tarzan... Now put your shoulder to this door. Now. <clears throat> Close the door, Nungo. Ah. An Arab robe and a burnous. I'll put them both on. And then I defy anyone to recognize Tarzan. Nungo dressed like Arab, too? No, no, no. I, I think the impersonation would be difficult for you, Nungo. Oh, here we are. His uniform of Senegalese soldier. Yes, I think you will look most handsome in the tasseled fez. 
We shall have to return these garments later, Nungo, but first we shall visit the camel livery belonging to the old man of the gray beard, where El Kafin said he had business to attend to. Perhaps we may learn the nature of that business. <laughs> Few people were abroad in the streets as Nungo and Tarzan skirted the marketplace. And those who did pass paid little attention to the soldier of Senegal and the tall, stoop-shouldered Arab. They went unchallenged as they passed the flower bazaar, the shop of a brazier, and the stall of a dye merchant. Next to this last shop, where citizens of Porto Chebir could bring fabrics they wished dyed, was the camel livery of the old man of the gray beard. The building was sprawling and dilapidated and the grizzled Arab who sat on a rickety stool near its entrance seemed to match the age and condition of the stable. You desire something, child of Allah? This humble servant of Mohammed and his friend, a noble soldier of Senegal, desire to engage two fleet young camels. Alas, our camels are all more than 40 years of age, and they travel surely, but without fleetness. Ah, you're lying. You save the young camels for others. I insist on examining the animals for myself. By you lie, speak the truth, but you can examine them. They are all like the poor beast here. Weak of limb and gray of hair. Mm, it is true. Now that my eyes grow accustomed to this weak light, I can see from here that all your animals are gray with age. Like the owner of this poor stable who is seldom here but remains at home suffering from age and infirmities. I had hoped to find strong young camels. Are there other camels within the city? Alas, no. This humble servant of Allah is sorry if he offers sadness. You are disappointed, brother? Uh, more than you can guess. I uh, bid you goodbye. We will seek elsewhere. Oh, if only we had found young camels there, we might have had the first link in our chain of evidence. Where we go now? I don't know. This defeats every thought I had. Well, let's sneak around behind the stable. Perhaps we you cannot can... go this way. Huh? Close passageway from dye shop to stable block path. A connection between a dye shop and a stable? Nungo, you've hit on it. Nungo not hit anything. Nungo, we are not the only ones who are capable of assuming disguises. A clever dye merchant could supply the pigments for giving young camels gray hair and for transforming Arabs into Negroes. Can't see anything here? Nothing but harnesses and bridles. Oh, wait, under this pile of straw. Bracelets, rings, breechcloths of natives. We're on the right trail, all right. Nungo, you look around under that huge pile of leaves and shrubs with which they feed the camels. I'm going to sneak up front to one of the stalls. Careful, Tyson. I have to know if I'm right about the camels, whether their gray hair is put there by the hand of man. There they are, poking through the things in the saddle room. They are the ones who ask about young camels. At them, men. They mustn't escape. Nungo, put your back to mine, and no one can sneak behind us. Nungo has back to Tarzan. Now. A fight until death, El Kafin! Tarzan, kill him! Kill him! Back to back, Tarzan and Nungo back to the onrushing horde of savage Arabs who fought to protect their secret and their stolen gold. Unused to the robe he wore, Tarzan fought with great difficulty. Arabs went down, but two took the place of each man who had fallen. Stiletto thin cuses glided through the air. Sharp scimitars descended like the blades of a guillotine. Nungo went down, wounded. A glancing blow made Tarzan's right arm useless. He fought hard, his knife held in his left hand, but the odds were too great. Until suddenly, natives of Nungo's tribe, led by the justice of the court, filled the stable and joined the fight. They fought savagely until the last of El Kafin's men were dead. You, you came just in time, Your Honor. I, uh, I've been worrying about you, but I knew I could not trust El Kafin and his police, so I was forced to recruit the prisoners. You did well to trust them. The evidence is here. I'm sure you will find that the camels, despite their gray hair, are young that the owner of this establishment, the old man of the gray beard, was none other than El Kafin, and that the Negroes who robbed the gold were his men in disguise. Look, Buana, black dye behind the ears of dead Arab. It's true. They were no cleaner about their bodies than about their minds, but the gold. I think you may find that beneath the pile of leaves and shrubs. Or when shall find gold beneath pile of food for camels? Well, that ties up all the loose ends, Tarzan, and believe me, you deserve great credit. For all your appearance as that of a jungle man, you have all the attributes of a man who has both education and culture. Ah! 
Tarzan. What in the world was that savage cry you made? It was the victory cry of the victorious bull ape. And it was made by a man you think both educated and cultured. In just a moment, we shall return with a word about our next story of Tarzan. Long has man searched for the secret of eternal life. He has crossed continents searching for fountains of youth. He has begged savage medicine men as well as educated pathologists to produce an elixir to stem the advance of age. And each time man has felt this goal within his grasp, he's been willing to kill to achieve eternal life. Our next story will be Life or Death. Tarzan, the transcribed creation of the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs, is produced by Walter White, Jr., prepared for radio by Bud Lesser, with original music by Albert Glasser. And this is a Commodore production. Commodore production.